Good evening, viewers. Welcome to the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television in our top stories. Members of uh, Parliament and equally signators of the Social Democratic Front Party have expressed frustration as the uh, June uh, 2019 session of Parliament has ended without the Anglophone crisis discourse, a crisis which has uh, turned Cameroon into pieces for close to three years old today. You'll be getting reactions of some of the senators and will equally be telling you about the Black Wednesday that was uh, witnessed or observed in uh, Mankon uh, in uh, Bamenda, northwest region of the country, following the failure by uh, administrative authorities uh, to uh, move on or to fulfill their promise to compensate uh, victims of the uh, attack or the military attack on uh, May 15, 2019, following the killing of uh, two uniform officers that uh, caused the uh, military men to go about uh, burning close to uh, 100 homes and equally destruction of several properties. More in this edition of the 6 p.m. Primetime Newscast. Once again, good evening to you viewers. Thanks for joining me in this edition of the 6 p.m. Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. Now we begin with the uh, senators of the Social Democratic Front uh, Opposition Political Party who have uh, raised uh, frustration over the June uh, parliamentary session of 2019 that ended without the Anglophone crisis discourse. The Anglophone crisis which has been tearing Cameroon apart for close to three years old today. For me, I'm Trump Sander has more. Senators, especially those of the Social Democratic Front, as their party left the Senate building disappointed as the Anglophone crisis again failed to feature on the agenda of this upper house of parliament throughout the 2019 June session of parliament. The much expected dialogue to end the worsening conflict in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon could not be discussed by senators. Contrary to the declarations of the Senate President, Marcel Nyat Ngifenji at the beginning of the June session of Parliament. SDF Senator Barrister George Kenyang regrets that the government is paradoxically diverting Cameroonians with issues like the extension of mandates of members of Parliament and municipal councillors rather than focusing on a genuine dialogue to end the crisis. Some members of the ruling CPDM party also say they are worried by the long and overdue crisis and believe that time is now and not tomorrow to engage a meaningful dialogue to solve the Anglophone crisis. Senator Mbela Muki Charles says a platform should be created for Cameroonians of all works of life to contribute for a return to peace in the trouble hit regions. The individual calls from senators flood at a time when some Anglophone activists are intensifying calls for a back to school come September 2019 in the Anglophone regions. Their calls have also maintained that guns must stop shooting in the Anglophone regions for children to be able to study in a serene environment. Closing the second ordinary session of parliament, Senate President Marcel Nyad Njifenji challenged Cameroonians to guard against what he qualified as a negative wind blowing across Cameroon and said Cameroonians should embrace the spirit of dialogue and forgiveness. And it was a Black Wednesday that was observed, uh, uh, that was observed uh, in uh, Mankon, Bamenda, chief town of the northwest region of the uh, country uh, by residents of Alachu, Muwatsu, and uh, equally Matsam. Uh, this has to do with what they refer to as government's failure to meet up with its promise to assist all those who suffered from the military excesses on the 15th of May 2000. 
2019. Victims of the 100 houses burnt getting to two months uh, today have not been identified and compensated as plus by uh, Northwest Governor Adolf Lele Lafrique. The Minister of Defense, Joseph Betia Somo, had also announced an investigation will be opened to the burnt homes and this, uh, properties destroyed. Over 200 persons, it should be recalled, were affected by the attack on civilians. The Black Wednesday aims at instigating the government to react promptly to their dying needs of the people, as most of them are now homeless. Promises have been made. Uh, a uh, second Black Wednesday will be observed for the voices of the oppressed to be heard. An internally displaced uh, person in the FACO division of the southwest region of the country will in the days benefit humanitarian assistance from uh, divisional officers. The humanitarian items were offered the divisional officers by the Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atanganji, who visited uh, FACO division in the southwest region recently. More in this report compiled by Davidson Maimo. Humanitarian aid destined to internally displaced persons in FACO Division as promised by the Minister of Territorial Administration some weeks back in Boya. These package made up of mattresses, blankets, bags of rice, savon soap, bucket are to be distributed in all the subdivisions in FACO Division. Reason why the subdivisional officers and mayors of FACO Division are at present to collect on behalf of their subdivision. The JB Otto Richard Ohm II is the first assistant SD for FACO, representing the SD for FACO and is in charge of the distribution. Today we are witness uh, the effectiveness of uh, his promise. We are gathered here for the distribution of the said uh, material assistance in all the various uh, subdivisions of FACO. However, Humanitarian aid to internally displaced persons which supposed to be received with some degree of happiness. None of the subdivisional officers could express this relief to the press. Even the mayors, especially CPDM run council mayors, all refused to say a word except that of the SGF Council in Tiku. It's a wonderful gesture. It's not the first time I think uh, the, deals, they already know what to do, how to handle it. It's not the first time they will handle it. But the bone of contention here, according to some communicators, is why Moyoka subdivision should compare in terms of number of internally displaced persons with some other subdivision, whereas it is the most hit subdivision with persons instead fleeing from Moyoka subdivision and not seeking refuge. Everything being equal, the humanitarian aid to internally displaced persons caused by the ongoing anglophone crisis is expected to a certain extent to assist the displaced persons as some are barely sleeping on bare floors without mattresses in areas where they are seeking refuge. A coalition of uh, human rights groups uh, in Africa, including the Center for Human Rights and Democracy in Africa of Barusa Agbo Bala and the Network of Defenders of Human Rights in Central Africa, Redak, have petitioned to the African Union to send a team to investigate what they term war crimes and crimes against humanity committed in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. The move has, uh, ha, the move has been uh, described by commentators as a thought to wake the African Union up from slumber as it has been silenced with regards to the killings in villages and towns in the two English-speaking regions of the nation. The capacities of community leaders have been reinforced on intercultural dialogue and equally conflict management. This was during a workshop that took place in Bamenda, chief town of the Northwest region. Our Northwest correspondent Bo Stella reports. Staying silent is one out of the many cultural aspects of a typical Mbororo. According to experts, this aspect has more disadvantages. Mbororos have a strong culture of silence, which is actually very strong. And another issue that is 
not also which is part of their culture was this issue of being so reserved and just not accepting any other culture to infiltrate. In order to bridge the gap and change the narratives, a capacity building workshop targeting Bororo community leaders has been organized in Bamenda by the Bororo Cultural and Development Association, Boskuda. Uh, here on the framework of what is uh, Bridging the Gap project, which is a project that is actually an intercultural dialogue, and as part of the activities is to build the capacity of uh, community leaders on leadership and uh, effective representation in decision-making arenas, as well as conflict management. This workshop comes at a time when Cameroon's territorial boundaries are being threatened in the northwest and southwest regions. One of the causes is cultural marginalization of a minority people. The participants are therefore expected to use the knowledge gained to prevent conflicts from escalating in their communities. In order to achieve this, the participants who are Ardos drawn from Bororo communities in the northwest have pledged to carry the messages to their populations population who have most often had farmer and grazier conflicts, some of which have led to loss of lives. I got some more, more discipline of the day, like farmer grazier problem. For my argument, we begin with uh, small group where we belong to camp, where, where in both, both the grazers and the farmers. The problem there, we know the goal from being with Santa, we solve our system. The workshop's attendance is also affected by the crisis. Some participants could not make it to Bamenda due to roadblocks and lack of transport vehicles from their localities. Stay silent is... Elections Cameroon is multiplying uh, strategies and efforts to ensure heat-free elections to take place in Cameroon. They include the municipal, legislative and regional elections. And today, an evaluation meeting held in Douala, Bonanjo, and attended by councillors, mayors, amongst others, uh, including political parties or political actors, uh, it served as a platform for pertinent uh, remarks made to Elecam board chair members. More with Hermine Luga. It's been a very explicit and expressive meeting this day. Ceux qui sont aux affaires ne se préoccupent pas. Est-ce que cela ne continue pas à créer des frustrations qui sont en un point douté le carburant de la révolte? The consultative meeting served as a platform for evaluation of elections Cameroon's job done so far in the national territory after the 2018 October presidential elections one which marked the presence of mayors, councillors, and key actors, who for most, the electoral board has a lot to do to convince the public. Is to have a biometric, complete biometric. You know, we have partial biometric, actually. And with complete biometric, we believe that the, the same day that we vote, everyone should have, can have, uh, the result of the, 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 the vote. So we need ELECAM to go deeply in that issue. We have also proposed that they should use uh, uh, the, the file of uh, um, uh, national identity uh, so that uh, that can bring easily uh, the, 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 the process to have a complete uh, biometric uh, system. Transparency in the election where everyone who will participate, we feel that is participating because uh, uh, it's uh, a way to have a good result. Mobility first, uh, and second about unity. It's evident the remark seems to turn around the credibility of elections Cameroon, which, according to some political actors, is one-sided and strategically favors the ruling party. When theist on this, both member of elections Cameroon, Dorothy Nchoma, denied the allegations. I don't know about incredibility. I think that uh, elections Cameroon, uh, since it's been there, uh, has uh, uh, brought about uh, a lot of improvements on the way that uh, elections have been organized uh, in, in Cameroon. Uh, definitely that uh, there are uh, improvements that can be made, but uh, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say that uh, uh, elections Cameroon uh, lacks credibility uh, uh, among the electorate. 
After lots of deliberations and proposals made, the election board chair members drew the curtains into the meeting, reassuring floor members to take into consideration your remarks. And the Director General of the Electricity uh, Sector Regulatory Agency, uh, Sir Jean-Pierre Kedzi, has voluntarily decided to uh, quit the para public institution. In a letter addressed to the Minister of Water and Energy Resources, Jean-Pierre Kedzi says he has embarked on a progressive disengagement process to leave his position come September 19, 2019. This, he says, is in conformity with the decree of July 19, 2018, categorizing public enterprises in Cameroon. So far, many have described him as a faithful compatriot who has not engaged in the manipulation of text in order to remove remain in office. And now we tell you about the Cameroonian diplomat uh, who uh, went drowning that's, uh, in a water body in the Ocean Division in the south region of the country. He went swimming with his family. His mortar remains were discovered a day after. More with uh, reporter Immaculate Fogwe. The Kribe Beach, known to have existed for several years and equally renowned touristic site, is still date a danger zone due to the lack of signal detection for the safety of its users. It is in this context of insecurity that Patrice Velenang, a diplomat who went swimming with his family, drowned and his lifeless body missing. He was later discovered a day after intensive search carried out by experts in lifeguard. These experts say they have tried in vain convincing the Kribi Council to accompany them in securing the beach, which has now become a death trap. Water is something natural. When swimming, the waves of the sea can carry you to a direction you least expect it. And if you are unable to swim, it poses a great danger. Dying by drowning in Kribi has now become a critical issue that has to be tackled. The negligence of those using the beach, according to lifeguards, could equally be blamed for the high death rates. For many observers, the Kribi beach is a great menace to human life. In the following report, uh, we present to you the deplorable state of roads in Dokoti here in the economic capital Douala. Once more, we get more with uh, Immaculate Fogui. We'll be getting this report still by Immaculate Fogwe, who will be reporting on the deplorable nature of the stretch of roads that is uh, found in Ndokoti, in the nation's economic capital, Douala. We are in Dokoti, in the Douala 3 subdivision. Circulation along the stretch of road poses a great danger to the population as motorists meander through large portions of crumbled potholes. Drivers trying to avoid potholes and dilapidated portions of the road end up putting other people's lives at risk. Those who ply the road on a daily basis recount their daily ordeal. We pay our taxes, but this is the type of road we are applying on. The government delegate is doing nothing at all. Look at the way these bad roads are destroying our vehicles. Applying on this road is very shameful. We have lost confidence on our government. Applying such a road is not easy. Business is really slow just because of its bad state. It should be noted that the Ndokoti neighborhood is the major entry and exit point of the Basa Industrial Zone. And now, up next is the smart sites of uh, Afcon 2019 in Egypt.
And we now welcome Smart Dukan Geber. Good evening to you, Smart, and welcome. Good evening, Innocent Aze, and good evening to our uh, televiewers of Equinox uh, TV. We'll certainly be going wide deep into the smart sites of the AFCON 2019 ongoing in Egypt. And uh, still concerning the quarterfinal matches being played today, Algeria is taking on uh, Cote d'Ivoire and are uh, already leading by one goal to nil. And the goal for Algeria is, uh, was scored by uh, Sofian Feguli. Sofian Feguli, who uh, put in on jersey number 10, uh, enabled the uh, Ivorian side. Uh, that is uh, Senegalese, or talking about the Desert Foxes of Algeria, to be leading. But maybe before we talk about that game, we know that Algeria are favorite. We take you to talk about Tunisia. Remember, that is a game that will be coming up immediately after the match uh, Ivory Coast uh, versus Algeria. Talking about Tunisia. Tunisia, as we know, Tunisia is one of the sites, just like Benin, that was eliminated by uh, Senegal uh, on uh, our Thursday, uh, Wednesday. Uh, we have uh, Tunisia that also sailed into the final group uh, matches, that is a knockout stage of this competition, from Group E after drawing three games and uh, coming out with three points and uh, only eliminated their opponents at the level of the eight finals on post-match penalty shootout. That was Ghana. So Tunisia will be a uh, warming up they will be having the last game that will be later in the evening at 8 p.m now talking about madagascar madagascar is uh, the another side the other side that uh, tunisia will be confronting later in the evening tunisia is going to be the team that uh, will confront uh, madagascar that is later in the evening to note that madagascar as we told you they are the surprise package of the competition this far because madagascar they are doing their last training session that was uh, yesterday they showed the uh, determination in everything that they had to do and we know madagascar as we told you uh came out as top of uh, group uh, uh, b uh, where we had the super eagles of nigeria they created sensation in that group as they eliminated or they beat nigeria by two goals to zero and talking about the record of madagascar they have uh, remained unbeaten in their first four matches at the african cup of nation a record that madagascar will want to keep you know madagascar is uh, the country where we have uh, the president of the Confederation of African Football, Ahmad Ahmad. And Samantha Jukan Gabriel will equally be uh, looking certainly at the uh, records of Algeria and uh, if not equally the uh, quarterfinal matches that played yesterday uh, between Senegal and uh, Benin. We equally saw Senegal uh, beating Benin. Many people were hoping that Benin would beat uh, Senegal to move to the semi-finals. And equally another shocking uh, defeat was that of South Africa by Nigeria. That is it. And before we jump into that segment, to note that the match this evening is going to be handled by three Cameroonian referees. They are the main officials of the match. Alongside the video assistant, we have Alium Nean CD, who is going to be the central referee. And we have the likes of Elvis Nupwe and uh, Mekwande Evaris. Those are the Cameroonians who are still present in Egypt. They will be the one to handle the game. That is uh, between uh, Madagascar and uh, the likes of Tunisia. As we speak, uh, news just coming in from uh, uh, Egypt say the match between Algeria and uh, Ivory Coast is now 1 1 at peace, which implies if it ends at this level, we're going to have an extra time. But for now, the latest result is Algeria 1, uh, Ivory Coast 1. Now, talking about the record of Idre um, Algeria, we should know that Algeria, they were the sides that actually made it uh, possible. Uh, it should be known that Algeria we saw them they were so so wonderful in the course of the encounter and algeria during the group matches they had the best attack with nine goals scored and they have the best defense of the tournament this farm that is no goal considered but the first goal they have already considered so this record doesn't hold again for algeria at this level as they have considered a goal so they have considered one goal but maybe they might still be one of the best defense of the competition and talking about other issues in the uh, today's edition we 
review the match between Senegal and Benin. That was a game that many expected Sadio Mane certainly to uh, add to his goal tally. Remember, uh, we, we, we have Sadio Mane who is one of those contesting for the golden ball of the African Cup of Nations. Unfortunately, he was not the man who scored the lone goal for Senegal. It was his own teammate. They call him Idrissa Gay, who actually scored the lone goal for Senegal. But to note that the match between the Teranga Lions of Senegal and uh, the Skouros of Benin was hotly contested by both, but the difference came in when Idrissa Gay uh, gave uh, Senegal that goal. Uh, he is the man who made Senegal to sail through, uh, you know, Benin, just like uh, Tunisia this, that will be playing this evening. They have sailed through to the knockout stage of the competition, uh, put, picking up draws at the group stage of the competition, and Benin eliminated uh, the Atlas Lions of Morocco. The other game we watched yesterday was the match between uh, uh, South Africa, the Bafana Bafana, against the Super Eagles of uh, Nigeria. And that match between South Africa and the Super Eagles of Nigeria, we know it was one of those games that many expected things to happen. But uh, this guy they call uh, Samuel Chukweze, that is his name, he was the one who gave uh, Nigeria that uh, uh, victory before South, uh, the, the lead, before South Africa actually came to uh, uh, equalize. And the equalize no, when, when uh, South Africa equalized their goal, it was uh, the video assistance referee that actually aided the South African side, and it took some time before they could uh, actually the referee could validate that goal. But finally, one one, and towards the last part of the game, it was uh, the defensive man Ekong, uh, tr trust Ekong, who actually scored that goal, the number five man for Nigeria, who scored the second goal for uh, South Africa, and it was total disappointment for the players of uh, South Africa who will be going back home, but they have learned something. Now, talking about the main man of the day, we are talking about uh, uh, the man they call Samuel Chukweze. Samuel Chukweze putting on JC number 13. He is the man who caught the attention of everyone. Remember, he, he, was, uh, the, he was voted man of the match. And something we need to know about this guy, uh, Innocent, he is just 20 years of mm -hmm. age. He has uh, played um, uh, seven matches and this was his first goal with uh, the Super Eagles of Nigeria and he became the youngest goal scorer of the African Nations Cup that is ongoing. Chukweze is the youngest man to have scored in this Nations Cup. So maybe if they are giving an award, he will be the one to pick up that award for the youngest goal scorer in the African Cup of Nations after he came out as uh, the man of the match against uh, South Africa. We we're talking about the video assistance referee. Exactly. Yeah, that uh, video that assistance referee. For the very first that time. is it. For the first time, <laughs> it, it was a little bit idle during the match. Uh, Senegal and uh, Benin, a little bit idle, though it worked just once. But in the South African game, that is against Nigeria, that is where we actually saw the work of a uh, video assistant uh, referee, as the video assistant referee was the one that actually decided that the goal for South Africa that was the first, uh, the equalizer was okay. So that is it uh, for that. So the video assistant referee was present. And maybe before we leave, uh, just to note that the draws for the under 17 World Cup 2 are already done. And the super, uh, we have the indomitable Lions of Cameroon who already know their opponents for the next stage, uh, the opponents for the, uh, the, 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 the indomitable Lions under 17 version. Remember the under 17 World Cup will be played in Brazil from the 26th of October to the 17th of November 2019 and the Indomitable Lions will be playing alongside Spain, Argentina, Pakistan. That is uh, going to be in Group E of the competition. Another uh, challenging moment for the Cameroonian team. Maybe they have an opportunity to make it at this level of another competition. Well, we hope it's an under-17 World Cup. Brazil is hosting. Let's, stay, let's just wait and see. Thanks so much, Manjik and Gabriel. Tomorrow, with the updates of the games of today. And that's it for this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. Thanks so much for watching. Tomorrow is another day. Good evening.